What's up guys? Thanks for joining me today. Today I am reviewing Thor Ragnarok, which stars Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, Kate Blanchett, Jeff Goldblum, Tessa Thompson, Mark Ruffalo. It's a very big cast, and there's more actually, but it's just too many to name. Before I get into this, I just want you to know this was not my idea, okay? But Jar Jar Binks from the Star Wars universe, uh, mostly from the, the prequels, tracked me down this morning and begged me, begged me to let him read the plot details for Thor Ragnarok. I was gonna say no, but you don't understand. Uh, once this guy begs, it's, it's just not a pretty sight. It's very annoying. He just won't stop. So it'll only take a minute. Just let him read. You know, and we'll, we'll be done with it. So, without further ado, here are the plot details for Thor Ragnarok, read by Jar Jar Binks. Okay, okay, Jar Jar, Jar Jar, go ahead, read. You're up. Who's that? Are you that? <sighs> Jar Jar, this was your idea. Okay, you begged me to have you read the plot details for Thor Ragnarok. Okay, so please just read. How rude. Anyhow, imprisoned on the other side of the universe, the mighty Thor finds himself in a deadly gladiator contest that pits him against the Hulk, Okide, his former ally and fellow Avenger. Hulk, isn't he that big green monster that- Yeah, Jar Jar, that's him. Please continue reading. Anyhow, Thor's quest for survival leads him in a race against time to prevent an all-powerful Hela from destroying his homeworld and Asgardian civilization. Much like Naboo! No, it's nothing like Naboo. Annie, Bobini, what's gonna happen to you? I'm not Annie. Oh, okay, you're done. Bye. Ah! I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I really am. I apologize. But it's over and done with. Now we can talk about Thor Ragnarok. Now before I get into this review, I want you to know this is going to be a spoiler review. I know I don't do much of these, but I felt this movie was important to talk about with spoilers because I was disappointed in this movie. I know, I know, I'm in the minority here, but I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to lay out the things, my reasoning why I find this movie to be very overrated. And I don't understand why it has a 93% in Rotten Tomatoes. I am finding a hard time with this movie and, you know, and its rating when it comes to most people and the way it's being looked at as if one of the best Marvel movies, if not the best Marvel movie that has been made. It's confusing to me because I didn't see it. But I'm going to get into that. So, uh, let's talk about the characters in the movie. Chris Hemsworth returns as Thor, the God of Thunder. And he's great. He's always been great as Thor. Um, you know, the first Thor and the second, they weren't the best Marvel movies, but they were fine. They were enjoyable. And he, he was always great as Thor. You know, I can't imagine anyone else playing Thor. And in this movie, he was fine. The problem is, and this is my main problem with the movie, was the comedy. The comedy was over the top. It was too much of it. Don't get me wrong. When it when it worked, it worked. And you're going to laugh a lot. But there were times where it was just slapstick parody funny. And it was way over the top. And it just... It didn't fit. It just didn't fit. It, it felt wrong. There's time in this movie where there was... There were supposed to be some dramatic elements. There were dramatic elements in this story that should have been realize and have more weight to them but it was ruined by the comedy everything was just funny to everybody and it just ruined it for me it did and chris more than anyone i think did most of the comedy i mean everyone played their part but there was times where it really felt um like he improvised a lot of the comedy and a lot of the actors did too and it just it, it, it felt all over the place Again, don't get me wrong, when it was funny, it was funny. But there's times where it didn't need to be there and it shouldn't have been there. And 
that was a problem for me. It really was. The Hulk and uh, Mark Ruffalo playing Bruce Banner are in this movie, and this is why I was most excited for seeing Thor Ragnarok, was the Hulk. I love the Hulk. The Hulk is awesome. In this movie, he is... He does have some cool moments. He does. The gladiator fight between him and Thor was really well done. Aside from the stupid comedy that was thrown in there as well. But it was really well done. The action sequences there were amazing. As far as the Hulk goes, as far as his character in the movie, I felt he was really dumbed down. I mean, I know Bruce Banner, when he's the Hulk, he's supposed to be kind of, you know, not too bright. But... There was times where he was having full-fledged conversations with Thor, and it, it just it took away from you know the coolness and the the scary parts of Hulk. It just it felt kind of dumb and, 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 and kiddish. I just didn't it didn't work with me. But the times where he was in action, it, it did yeah, it was cool. Otherwise than that, no, I I, I didn't appreciate. It. I, I didn't appreciate the five-year-old humor that was pretty much thrown into the script. I just did. Tessa Thompson plays Valkyrie in the movie. And she was really good. Uh, her character was very interesting, but I felt wasn't fleshed out enough either. Um, they just didn't give enough screen time for you to care much about her character. I mean, they do go to some detail at some point in the movie where they show, you know, her past and, you know, somewhat of her history. But there's just so much going on in the movie. And again, so much comedy. That it just ruined the moments. Uh, you know, there were her, there were especially her story. There was moments in her story that I thought would have serviced the movie a lot better if they were in a more serious tone. So yeah, but uh, yeah, her character for the most part was really well done. And uh, you know, if there's any future installments with her character in it, I'm sure it would be great. I just hope it's handled a lot better. But yeah, she, she did good. All right, now let's talk about the villains for a second. Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmaster, I thought did a great job. Jeff Goldblum was brought in to do Jeff Goldblum, and I was fine with it because it, it made sense, and his comedy in the movie worked. I had no problems with the comedy in the movie when it came to him because that's what he was brought in to do, and it worked. He was great in the movie, I have no complaints, and I really can't wait to see him in future installments in Marvel movies. if. You know, his character is written for a future Thor movie or Avengers or whatnot, who knows, but I thought he was great. Kate Blanchett plays Hela in the movie, and I thought she did a hell of a job. You're welcome. I thought she was great. I really dug her character. She looks amazing. She was a great villain, and we definitely need better villains in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because, let's face it, there's not a lot to stand out. So she was great, but the problem is his sister to to, to uh, Thor and Loki, and it should that should have been a moment where you know the characters should have reacted better, should have had a should have meant something, and it didn't. It, it, it just was just there, and the comedy just you know laid over it. That's funny. That's all that matters, right? Oh, Tom Hiddleston as Loki has always been great. Always been great. He is my favorite villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and for most people. I mean, he's the villain that stands out the most. But he had no business in this movie. No business. I don't appreciate when they do this. When they basically throw in a character that most people love just to have him in there. Um, in this movie, he's basically picked on. You know, he's worthless. And... When they do that, you know, they make the character kind of worthless in our eyes, too. So everything that he's done in the past, anything that, you know, he's done great as far as a villain, means absolutely nothing. So why have him in here? You know, you're just going to basically make the character look dumb and pathetic. You know, you're ruining his legacy. What was the point? It was stupid. He was just literally in here for shits and giggles. That's it. It was, it was a waste of time. So, there was a lot going on in this movie. Um, there's like two or three movies basically shoved in this movie, you know? And I thought for the most part, it, it, it was handled well. 
Um, you know, you had the Thor Ragnarok storyline from the comics, and you also had Planet Hulk from the comics as well. Planet Hulk could be a, a movie all on its own. Um, I know why they haven't done it, because, you know, Marvel and Disney don't have the rights completely for Hulk, so they can't do a standalone movie on Hulk, which is fine. You know, it is what it is, but, you know, they also cut short the story as well, and to me, that kind of sucked, you know? <laughs> There are a lot of cool things in Planet Hulk that, you know, they kind of just went over and again was ruined because of the comedy. So, uh, I didn't appreciate that as a moviegoer. I was kind of offended because I felt that the director and the producers of this movie felt like the audience couldn't handle any dramatic uh, tones in this movie. Anything that was serious that happened was kind of just overthrown with comedy so that we wouldn't have a, th uh, uh, a second to think, oh, jeez, I can't believe that happened. That sucks. You know, like, we couldn't handle anything that was serious. It was ridiculous. And I'm shocked that more people aren't noticing this. You know? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, I, I just... I had a problem with it. I really did. And a lot of decisions in this movie, as far as Thor, the character, I felt were kind of weird. And I'm not sure how I felt about it, because Thor went through a lot in this movie. Um, he lost his hammer. The hammer that makes him who he is. I mean, he's known for that hammer. It's like Captain America, you know, uh, losing his shield. And it, it breaks, and that's it. It's just, it, it's awkward that we're never... And, well, maybe never. We might see that... You know, the hammer again in future installments but as of now it pretty much looks like that's it he doesn't have the hammer anymore which just feels weird and he got his hair cut uh, yeah, it didn't bother me but you know uh, Thor is just known for you know having long hair it, but again minor stuff then he loses one eye I mean how much how much transformation does this guy have to go through you know, it just, now at one point it just feels like a totally different character, you know? I get it, yeah. At the end, he kind of embraces his true power, which is the thunder. He's the god of thunder, and he doesn't really need the hammer. He doesn't... Okay, fine. But it's... It just feels like a different character now, you know? It doesn't feel like Thor. So, yeah, guys. Um, I was disappointed in this movie. I was. Uh, I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. It, you know, again, it's a movie that most most of you are gonna enjoy and have enjoyed. And yeah, you definitely should see it in the theater because it's a movie that you should it should be seen in the theater. But me personally, I was disappointed. It could have been a hell of a lot better. And uh, yeah, that's what I thought. So comment below. Let me know what you guys thought, please. Uh, don't take offense to my review. I just this is my personal opinion. And uh, if you like my review, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will.